This short lecture will cover growth characteristics of bacteria as well as the microscopic appearance of, ba appearance of bacteria. A single bacterium, or just a few bacteria, grow and divide until a colony is visible on an auger plate. As you can see, there are multiple colonies on this plate, and these bacterial colonies have varying characteristics. Colonies can vary in shape, color, texture, and other characteristics, even smell. Common terms are used to describe colony characteristics. You should become familiar with these terms and use them as much as possible to describe the characteristics of bacteria that you are examining. I realize some of these may be difficult for you to, term, for you to determine since you will be using photos of your plates rather than direct observations, but I will help you with that. You can see that colonies take different forms. Most common to us will be punctiform, they look like little dots, circular, and irregular. Colonies also have different elevations, that is how far they appear above the surface of the auger. They can be flat, they can be raised, so just slightly above the auger. They can be convex or dome-shaped, pulvinate, which is a big dome, almost like a gumdrop, or umbinate. Colonies also have different margins, that is the edge of the colony. They can be entire, so appearing like a nice circle. They can be undulate, so more uneven, lobate, eros, filamentous, or curled. In the curled, it almost looks like the rings on a tree. You can see that the bacteria kind of grows in waves. Then there's different colors and different sizes as well. I think you can see that these two bacteria have very different colony characteristics. Staphylococcus aureus, or S. aureus, is on the left. It's the yellow gold bacteria, and Pseudomonas aeruginosa is on the right. That's the blue-green um, bacteria you see growing. You can see that the Pseudomonas aeruginosa on the right appears more flat, although some of the colonies maybe have that umbinate appearance, whereas the Staph aureus has a nice circular entire colony formation. Bacteria can also have distinctive characteristics when grown in liquid or broth cultures. A broth culture with no bacteria will be clear, that is, you can see through it. Almost all bacteria growing in a broth will make the, the broth turn turbid or cloudy because it's filled with bacteria. But that bacteria can also appear flocculent, that is, like little clumps of bacteria flocking in the broth. You can get a pellicle, kind of a crust over the top of the broth or sediment, the bacteria may sediment and fall to the bottom. Here's a few examples taken from our lab. It may be a little difficult to see, but Bacillus subtilis on the left develops a flaky deposit on the tube. Pseudomonas aeruginosa develops a slimy deposit at the top of the surface of the broth, and Staph epi forms a ring at the top of the broth. Also very important is the microscopic shape and arrangement of bacteria. These are really important for describing and identifying bacteria, and this will be covered also in your lobster simulation. So for our purposes, there are three shapes that will most often be seen in the bacteria we use in Biology 207. The coccus, coccus is the singular term, or cocci, plural, have a round shape. The bacillus, which is singular, bacillus, are rod-shaped. Bacilli are the term used for more than one. And a few of our bacteria are coccobacillus, that is more of an oval shape. It's sort of intermediate between round and rod-shaped. Additional shapes such as vibrio and um, spirochete will be covered in your labster cell um, simulation. Bacteria also can appear in different arrangements. So some common arrangements of the bacilli are just a single or random bacilli. They can be diplo, that is they appear, appear in pairs of two. 
they can be described as palisades. Sometimes that vertical lining up, it looks almost like a picket fence. Or bacilli can appear in chains as in streptobacilli. The term strepto refers to chains. Cocci also appear in different arrangements. They can be, again, single and random. They can also appear in the diplo arrangement, so two of them joined together, diplococci. They can appear as staphylococci, that is in a cluster looking much like a bunch of grapes. Or they also can appear in that strep or chain arrangement, streptococci. And sometimes they appear as tetrads or um, the sarcina. You should be familiar with these terms, in particular diplo, staphylo, and strepto. And then just some final notes. When you're looking at bacteria microscopically, which in your case I will send you photos, not all of the bacteria need to appear in a particular arrangement. Some will be random, some may be diplo, but when choosing whether or not there's an arrangement, do a significant number or the majority of the bacteria appear in a particular arrangement. If I showed you a slide of Staphylococcus aureus, which as you can well imagine is a cocci that appears in that staphylo or clustered arrangement, there will be random bacteria, random cocci. There will be diplo, but you will see that many of them appear in that staphylo arrangement. And then one other final note to be aware of, um, the difference between the genus name, Bacillus, and the arrangement or the shape, Bacillus. So when we're referring to a genus, the term is always capitalized and in italics. So if you see, as in the first line there, Bacillus, capitalized and italicized, that's referring to the genus Bacillus. And the genus Bacillus, those bacteria have that Bacillus or rod shape. But when we're, de when we're describing shape, then that's the lowercase Bacillus. And the same goes for Staphylococcus and Streptococcus. There is the genus Staphylococcus and the genus Streptococcus. Those again will appear as capitalized and in italics, the bacteria in the genus Staphylococcus have the staphylococcal arrangement. That is, you will see those cocci arranged in bunches. And bacteria in the genus Streptococcus most often have that streptococcal arrangement. That is, cocci in a strep or chain arrangement. So pay attention to that, be careful whether or not it's referring to the genus or the shape.